Are you a single mom that has a terrible time managing your time throughout the day? I have a hack for that. When you are the only adult in the household trying to get all the things done, boy, can it be exhausting and taxing and overwhelming. As a single mom entrepreneur myself, <laughs> I have had all the struggles with trying to manage my time. So let's talk about some hacks for that. First, I want to say welcome back. Thank you for joining. I'm Jen, single mom artist and entrepreneur, and this channel is all about helping other single parents build a life that they love and do it all on their own. Now, this time management thing is difficult. It just is, right? We all know it. Today I have seven hacks to help you get through it. Number one is to prioritize your tasks for the day. Make a list of all the things you need to get done and prioritize them in the order of urgency. This will make sure that the things that absolutely have to get done today, get done first. The things that could be put off tomorrow, okay, put them off till tomorrow if absolutely push comes to shove. Getting the most urgent tasks accomplished first will make your life so much easier. Sometimes those most urgent tasks are also the most daunting and overwhelming tasks, which is all the more reason to do them first. Get the worst task done so that you can move on to easier things. Number two is to use a calendar. I don't care if it's a physical calendar like I use. I don't care if it's on your phone. It doesn't matter to me what kind of calendar you use, but use a calendar. That way you can keep track of your appointments and your tasks by the order in which they're going to get done during the day. I highly recommend that you plan out time slots for all of those tasks that you said you needed to accomplish as well. because. If you have a plan, it is much easier to get through the day. By having everything written down on a calendar in the order that you're going to do it, you are freeing up really valuable mental space. So you're not spending time, you're not wasting time in between tasks going, what was I going to do next? Because it's already there planned out for you. Plan your day in advance. Number three and I struggle with this one myself, is to delegate tasks. You are one person. You cannot possibly do everything all the time, all by yourself. If there are tasks that you can delegate to other people, and I promise you there are, then by all means, delegate them. The kids can load the dishwasher. The kids can move the laundry. You do not have to do every single tiny task. Find the ones that you can delegate and do it. If you own businesses and you have employees, delegate those tasks to your employees that don't have to involve you. Free up some of your time to do the most important things and to do the things that only you can do. Okay, number four is to take breaks. And I know that can be difficult once you get on a roll doing something. I struggle to, to stop once I'm really moving on a roll. But if you take small breaks, you're going to avoid getting burnt out on the day. And I'm talking about small breaks, five, 10 minutes. Going to the bathroom does not count as a break unless you also use that time to walk outside and take a lap around the neighborhood, okay? <laughs> <laughs> take a five minute break, a 10 minute break, but set a timer. That'll keep you from getting too far off track. That'll keep you from getting lost in the break so that you don't get back to work. Take five minutes to meditate, sit on your porch, go for a walk, whatever you need to do, whatever helps you to recharge and feel refreshed to go back to work. Small breaks, at least a couple a day, set a timer. Number five is to set boundaries. Set boundaries between your work and your personal life. Now, if you work from home, this can be difficult. If you're a business owner who also works from home, it can be even harder. But you have to set time aside for your family and for yourself. Because when you don't do that, you get absolutely burned out and you need time to recharge and recuperate and so does your family. 
So plan it into your day. Plan it on your calendar when you are setting your priorities for your tasks for the day. Family time should be in your priority list. It absolutely should. Time for yourself should be in your priority list. Cooking dinner, running to the grocery store, not time for you, okay? Those are tasks that must be completed. Those are not you taking a break, you setting aside time for yourself, okay? So let's just be clear on what is time for you and what is tasks that need to be accomplished. Make sure you take some time for yourself and that you are taking time for your family and you are setting very clear boundaries between work and family life. Number six, this is one of my favorite ones and that is to find small blocks of latent time to get things accomplished. So when I say latent time, I'm talking about time that you spend waiting or um, traveling or time that is time that you are not really doing anything in particular. So for instance, while you're driving somewhere, if there's a book that you've been dying to read, get it on tape, get a book on tape or download it or whatever to your, your phone or your iPod. Listen to it in the car. Listen to that book while you're driving. That gives you an opportunity to use that time that otherwise would be wasted time essentially to your advantage. Another one is when your kids are doing activities. For instance, my daughter is a dancer. We spend a lot of time at dance class. And most of the time I sit in the car during that time. So instead of just sitting in the car, I take my book to read, or sometimes I'll bring my laptop and I'll hook into my hotspot on my phone and I'll get a little bit of work done. It just kind of depends on what it is that I need to accomplish. But the point is, you have these times where you're literally just waiting and it's a really good time to get small chunks of things accomplished, even if it's just answering emails. So if I'm waiting at the doctor's office, instead of spending that time scrolling through Facebook, I'll use that actually checking and answering important emails instead. Number seven, and this is a hard one, is to get organized and stay that way. Oh my gosh, we waste so much time looking for the thing that we need. Where if we were organized, if things weren't a mess, if things weren't a disaster, if we put things back where they belong in their place, after we're done using them, we would always know where they were. We would always be able to find them. We wouldn't waste time hunting for things. And I'm terrible about this one. I mean, my desk is a wreck right now. You can't see it because I cropped it. <laughs> but it is, it's a complete and utter wreck. That would be a task for later today. But the more organized that you can stay, the less time you will waste trying to get organized. So of those hacks, what's your favorite? Mine is the latent time. I feel like I get so much accomplished in a 30 minute time block while my daughter's at dance class. Because I know I only have 30 to 45 minutes, I hyper focus and I get so much done in that little bit of time. Now that's not to say if you have little kids, they want you in there, they want you watching them. My daughter is old enough that she doesn't want me in the room, she doesn't want me to watch her practice. She wants things to be a surprise for their performances. So she prefers that I don't come in and that I don't watch. If you have little kids that want you watching them during their activities, then do that. That matters. It matters if you're paying attention to them when they want your attention. It matters. But if you have older kids that don't want you watching, or even younger kids, if your kids are not interested in you watching their activities or they're just kind of shy and they, they do better when you're not in there watching, then use that time to your advantage. You do have to kind of plan ahead to make sure you have the things with you that you need in order to get work done, but it doesn't take that much plan. It takes me five minutes to decide, oh, today I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna tally up my receipts. Then that means all I have to grab is my laptop and my folder of receipts. Super simple. I grab two things and I can get a task that I despise doing really knocked out quickly while my daughter's in dance class. Super simple. And all it took was a couple of minutes of pre-planning. 